Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the L1 show. Today is November 23rd, and we're doing business and social. Also, I think I said social last time and then realized we were doing security about halfway through. <clears throat> Whoops. Too late to fix it now. Well, we have a somewhat shortened collapse section this week, but we do have some collapse stories. There's still quite a few. Don't fret. Amazon CEO says more layoffs will happen in 2023. Don't worry. Ugh. And this is not warehouse layoffs. This is the executive. So it kind of feels like they were waiting till after Christmas, though. They're like, we're going to wait till like January. <laughs> well, they need everybody for that Christmas rush. You think they'll get to the point where they're telling the white collar people, it's like, why don't you just go do some time in the warehouse? Probably. Tell me that you're expecting a credit card debt wall without telling me that you're expecting a credit card debt wall. And at Amazon, there was one unit that has been able to do no wrong up until now. They were carrying a lot of that company with their huge profits. But even that is starting to sag. Amazon's once red hot web services business extends hiring freeze for most teams until 2023 and targets low performers. I love this low performers thing. <laughs> There's this is it's it's sort of the new CEO hot word. It's like yeah. low performers, but it's it's defined as the bottom X percent of the company. There's always going to be a bottom X percent of the company. They could still be performing really, really well. Yeah. They're just lower than everybody else. But that is the new buzzword, and that is the soft layoff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's how we do that without saying that we're actually doing that. Oh, this pop-up ruined my perfect transition. 10,000 Google employees could be rated as low performers. So Google is moving 3%. You know, identify 3% of the people that are maybe not contributing as much as the others to 10%. That's a more than doubling. That's more than a tripling. What does that tell you? Is that another stealth layoff? I think it's a layoff. Wall Street had better not get a hint of that. Otherwise, the stock price is going to go crazy. And then maybe we'll see the S&P 500 have problems. That'll no? be a nice, happy new year. That's everybody. weird. The S&P 500 is fine. What's going on? That seems weird. <laughs> now, there is one man among all this whose job security is nearly guaranteed. And that is John Ray III. What does he do? Well, he presides over companies that have been horribly destroyed, destroyed by corruption. Like Enron. Oh, wait. Never seen such a complete failure of corporate controls, says new FTX CEO, who also oversaw the Enron bankruptcy. So he's seen some pretty bad stuff. And yet it was nothing compared to what he's describing here. I thought Adelphia was bad. <laughs> FTX? Good Lord. I saw another FTX headline that was just... Like the guy, and then it was like the quote was "I effed up." Yeah. Well, he did a. Some reporter got him on Twitter direct yeah. messages or something, and he said a lot of stuff that was probably really stupid to say. Yeah, to anybody but his lawyer. And then they printed it, obviously, and uh, so yeah, FTX, big problems, and they are. We're just seeing the start of this. FTX owes money to more than a million people. Court filing suggests. In fact, there could be more than one million creditors because the little, the little paperwork, the bankruptcy paperwork, is like, how many creditors do you have? And most of the options are centered around less than a thousand. Yeah, and I got bad news for those million people. You're never getting anything. <laughs> but he's delusional enough to try. <laughs> You've been Mount Goxed. FTX founder Sam Bankman Freed attempts to raise cash, according to the Wall Street Journal. This is a Reuters Who, article too. Look at the unhinged look in his eyes. Like <laughs> he's got the crazy eyes. Doesn't yeah. He? I like a, somebody made a, a card with a Theranos lady and him and a bunch of other people over the years and Bernie made off. And it's just like, what? I bet, I, I bet I can tell you the number one response to people after he pitches that idea to them to raise that money. It's always, Ooh, mm. <laughs> mm. you know, it's tight right now. You know, the downturn. bro, I really feel for you, but <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't right now. It's Christmas. I got to get gifts for the kids. And the contagion has not stopped. Uh, the crypto lender block fee block five says that it has significant exposure to FTX. And they're not the, the only ones that have popped up. They need to isolate. Uh, <laughs> How do you get six feet away from financial contagion? Mm. Jim and I, oh, and then, do that one. Yeah, hang on, hang on. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, so another knock on effect of uh, all of these uh, crypto houses had FTX, they had exposure to FTX. So obviously, when something just disappears, Jim and I earn warns customers of likely withdrawal delays due to Genesis lending pause. 
Gemini, I think, is the Winklevoss one. It's um, it's a platform where you give them your crypto and you earn a return on it, which is from 0.75 to like six or seven percent, something like that. But they have your crypto, but now you can't get your crypto out because your crypto is now worth zero. Yeah. Hmm. Well, your crypto might not be worth zero, but whatever they were doing with your crypto is now worth zero. And it's not yours anymore. Yeah. Because now it's part of the bankruptcy. Not yet, but yeah. coming. Isn't this why FDIC insurance was created? There ain't. This is the Wild West. That's how they're <laughs> going to destroy crypto because you know these people didn't realize they were taking all this risk. Although it's it's BS because the powers that be turned over on crypto yeah. and started recommending it at some point. If because they is, were trying to get in and yeah. make money. If this is the one the Winklevoss twins are behind, then you know they can make me whole. Surely we're going to see some amazing lawsuits out of that. Do we have any lawmakers who staunchly stayed anti-crypto and were, you know, like, shouted down? Uh, not after all the lobbying dollars showed up. <laughs> That's an I'm easy sure way to there get must be one. Someone maybe in the chat might know. Ah, uh, well, did Rand Paul ever talk about cryptos? I, because of the the Russian axis, probably not. What about? Uh, I guess Bernie would be pro crypto, right? He's the yeah. other one I could think of that might. Turn against the tide. It's like, oh, this might be an egalitarian monetary system. And the Fed is horrifying. No, it turns out this was even more horrifying. Oops. Well, you don't have to be involved in the crypto world in order to be destroyed as a modern company. Protocol. The new tech news focused website will shutter and lay off its entire staff. We very regularly used stories from there. And they were okay. I'm surprised that there were 60 people behind that website. That is... A much larger staff than I would have estimated. It seems like a lot of places now they just hire someone to do writing uh, freelance. So well, it's incre incredible they actually had a staff and not just a bunch of freelance writers. It's it's crazy though because thing AI like GPT three and GPT four for mainstream consumption like the Wall Street Journal can just have an AI give a summary on who TSMC is or who you know what this piece of technology is or whatever and it will output a perfectly reasonable thing we have a story about that later and i have some anecdotal talks <laughs> about how that is not true <laughs> and you can poison that you yeah. can poison it easily well i noticed this this is funny because i watch uh shoplifting videos on youtube and one channel whenever someone would shoplift whatever item they were shoplifting it would pop up and it'd be like youtube shopping and you could buy the M&Ms on Amazon that were being wow. stolen in the video. And I was like, I wonder if that's automatic or is the channel monetizing that somehow? Turns out the channel was monetizing it somehow. YouTube expands shopping features to combat digital ad slowdown. <laughs> They've noticed that creators are using things like Amazon and Newegg, etc. affiliate links and making money that way. And <laughs> YouTube wants their cut. I didn't buy any M&Ms, but... TikTok has something like this too. This is just them chasing TikTok again. Isn't every social media company right now just chasing, chasing TikTok? TikTok? Yeah. Uh, and uh, this has been a, a big concern for some time now. And it was a big concern before we announced like five new fabs in this area. But now they're finally facing it, I guess. Microsoft Meta and others are face uh, and others face a rising drought risk to their data centers. This article says that in just one day it takes 300,000 gallons to cool itself, but are those that water is not lost. That Some just, of it probably is, but yeah. Very little of it. But you have to retreat it, right? Yeah. It has to be perfectly pure. So it's not like you can just keep using it over and over, but you could certainly probably recycle a lot of it. Could add a solar a solar uh, reverse evaporation system. Well, if the, if the discussion is also about like, we might not have enough money for farms or our people. Data centers, you'd think, would maybe be a little lower on the list. but I'm not sure, though. The way things are today? I mean, yeah, I guess. But I guess water's not a human right anymore, right? They say by 2030 they want to be water positive. I also wondered what that meant. I don't know. Are they going to generate water somehow? Collect rainwater. <laughs> but, Wait, uh, that's not allowed. They also not said there. they want out water out of the cooling process. Do you think that's like going with cooling fluids? They're going with PUFA. PUFA oils to cool it. <laughs> but do you have to clean that every time too? Glycol, it will, it will have to be filtered and dealt with, yeah. New business opportunity out there. 
you got some filtering equipment or you want to invest in some <laughs> i've patented a new glycol filter that's 80 percent more efficient than the most efficient next model well remember the epic apple lawsuit it's over no no it's never, never over the appeals process will go on indefinitely and we still get like the big back and forth every time epic strikes back at apple's ios security defense in the appeals court it says no no this is just a thin veneer it's a walled garden for exclusivity it doesn't really have anything to do with security security is you know any kind of effect on security is really just a secondary effect not a primary effect that rings true to me yeah i believe that so more of that nonsense for years and years to come <laughs> see also uh facebook didn't really have any trouble getting the data out from the ios app for cambridge analytica where was your security then apple where was it now apple has been forced uh, we just saw yesterday in india is the newest one every country is going to get on this bandwagon they are going to have to put USB C on the iphones everywhere they took one last little FU on the way out <laughs> just to screw their consumers. Only the iPhone 15 Pro will get a speed upgrade with USB-C, says analysts. That means the USB-C connection will operate at USB 2.0 speeds, which is a, a uh, pokey 40 megabit. Most people probably won't notice that. But it's just a, it's why would you? Such garbage. How much money did they save doing that? Probably none. They're just doing it to be spiteful. Well, they didn't have to get the better chips, so there's some savings there, but... Why are you plugging your phone in? It just does things wirelessly. That yeah. was literally verbatim a comment in that article. I can see a lot of people feeling that way. How do you transfer photos and stuff? We're doomed. Doomed as a species. You use the Apple Cloud, Krista, obviously. The iCloud. That's... <laughs> Yes. They recommend that for everything. Yeah. You got back problems? Have you tried the iCloud? <laughs> it didn't help. <laughs> Eating too many poofas? Oh, well, the iCloud. <laughs> it's poofa free. <laughs> and NVIDIA, of course, the big controversy swirling around their power connectors continues to be hotly debated. NVIDIA hit with a class action suit over melting RTX 4090 GPU adapters. Although, Gamers Nexus uh, did some research. And it sure thinks that the NVIDIA thinks the RTX 4090 cables were melted because they weren't fully plugged in. And that there's a lot of evidence to suggest that. Yeah, yeah. There's a picture from Gamers Nexus that uh, shows a connector starting to melt when it was just that much out of the out of the uh, uh, out of the seat. But that's I mean, I was going to say you can barely tell a difference. Like, is that really the fault of the consumer if it's not designed in such a way that it's clear? I would also say that an electrical outlet. Like, people have heaters that aren't plugged in all the time. It doesn't burn your house down. Yeah. Yeah, because there's rules about <laughs> tolerances with that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. You have to. They're pushing the envelope so hard that we, we're probably in a world we're going to have to start thinking about, like, not making them out of these crappy materials anymore, right? Yeah. Uh, there's also, I, I don't know if this is with this connector, but with this type of connector, the larger version of this connector, as they heat and cool through different use cycles, the expansion and contraction will actually cause the connector to work its way out. If it, and that's what the snap is for, is to snap in. But if it's all the way in and it doesn't snap for some reason, which, you know. Or you break that little tab off, which happens. Yeah, mm -hmm. it'll just work its way out. And at some point in working its way out, it catches on fire. Which is the worst thing. <laughs> if you're making an electronic device, you never want it to catch on fire. It's like the early days of... Uh, the electric light bulb. It's like, oh, the electric light bulb is so amazing. Ah, oh, there's a one in a thousand chance it'll burn your house down. But candles. Well, the candles are like one in a hundred. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> it blows my mind when I read about like the history of the Christmas tree and people used to put actual candles <laughs> on in a gender. Dry, yeah, right? on, a, on a dry Christmas tree. People do insane things around holidays. Yeah. It really is amazing. Because it's, it's very stressful. Very, very stressful. Look how beautiful and, the live candles look in my giant piece of tinder and think about when you're going through the holiday magic think about how all those major companies recognize that and prayed on it oh, so yeah. heavily <laughs> well this is an interesting headline because what this study found is actually kind of the opposite of what the headline says apple airpods can work as a more affordable hearing aid study finds a 249 dollars pair of wireless earbuds isn't cheap but it's more accessible than a $10,000 hearing aid. So they found that it worked 
better in some scenarios with cheap hearing aids, but it wasn't better than the more expensive hearing aids. But nowhere close to the $10,000 hearing no. aids. Well, and apparently some people were saying too that a lot of hearing aids that are still really good are nowhere near that $10,000 price point and they're still going to work better than the ear earbuds. So it's like... Yeah. Yeah. Basically what that headline should have been was we had this idea and it turned out to be wrong. Yeah. Or <laughs> right, but only under very particular <laughs> conditions. So many, so restrictive conditions that we might as well have been wrong. Mm -hmm. But that would not have made a very good news story. How long before uh, hearing aid companies get an exemption to make their $10,000 hearing aids look like uh, AirPods to avoid the social stigma of having a hearing aid? Uh, I feel very heavily social stigma <laughs> against the AirPod people, especially at the grocery store. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to see AirPods in your ears at the grocery store. Pay attention. Yeah, I'm kind of amazed how many people listen to headphones Shocking. while they shop. Yeah. I usually don't. I'm shocked at how many people are not listening to headphones, but they're having a conversation with themselves. And it's like, oh, thank God I see an, an, an AirPod. They're not schizophrenic. Oh, I talk to myself all the time. Like, <laughs> Without the, the AirPods. No, yeah, just because I'm weird. And I recognize that that's strange. But Well, we talked about this last week, and it didn't take very long. It is now ready to go. I think some people are already getting this service. Apple launches emergency SOS via satellite in U.S. and Canada. If you've got an iPhone 14 or 14 Pro, you'll see a new feature show up on your iPhone that could save your life one day. I looked for this thread for like 20 minutes. Someone in, I think, the Ultralight subreddit, which is a hiking subreddit, said that they had tested this and it worked pretty well. Could not find the thread again because I was going to add it to the list of stories, but now, kind of cool. Can you contact anybody or is it just an emergency service? It's an emergency service. So, so when they were testing, they were like, I'm just kidding, guys, but does this work? Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. But um, yeah, it, does, it works though. That's very similar to like the Garmin inReach. You have, there's a very similar little device you can like clip to your backpack. And I think it does have a texting capability, but for the most part, it is just like an SOS button. Another thing that it's going to be tough for uh, drama and horror writers to write around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Will no one think about the creativity of our writers? <laughs> Will no one think of our imaginary horror killers? I wonder if in our lifetime we'll get to a point where you hit the emergency SOS button and then immediately like 10 rescue robots descend on your location. Drones. <laughs> and snap your neck and harvest your organs. <laughs> this is some better use of the money. <laughs> well, uh, the cloud is out there and uh, Microsoft has decided to make it super, super cloud. Cloud computing, Microsoft and NVIDIA are building a massive AI supercomputer. Here's why. It's it's mainly the CUDA software stack, but it's going to be an Azure and it's going to do all kinds of fun stuff. Why Microsoft? Well, Microsoft has shown that they're the most serious of all the cloud providers about building giant, insanely fast interconnects among all their machines in the cloud. And yet Microsoft Dynamics, <laughs> like 10 seconds per click seems to be what they're satisfied with. <laughs> Maybe they should put some supercomputer power on that. And uh, Microsoft has also, you know, they're trying to get away from those pesky physical purchases. They want everything to be in the cloud like we're talking about. So they made an Xbox that was no discs, just straight up uh, all online streaming console however in these inflationary times microsoft's xbox streaming console keystone was pushed back because of its price they couldn't quite get it to around a hundred dollars so uh, maybe we'll see a similar device later it's shocking that they couldn't do that for a hundred dollars because that's basically a chromecast right i think they still have the graphical processing on board maybe not i don't know Chromecast can be pretty crappy with the menus and stuff. And we, uh, Tim Cook may have said something out of turn here. This might not have been a public thing to talk about yet, but he did talk about it in an unrelated speech. Apple will buy processors from a factory in Arizona, CEO Tim Cook reportedly says. The, the full quote was some processors. Yeah. Now, the article says that this is going to be the TSMC facility, and that would mean that it's going to be online in 2024. But I don't know if we really have confirmation that it's TSMC. Also, those projects rarely finish on time. Yeah. 2024 so, seems awfully close. Very close. And plus, you know, things are not good right now. So, plus that's an election year. Can you imagine? Mm. 
I wasn't uh, familiar with these one wheel balance board things. Have you guys seen any of these in the wild? Yeah. yeah. I've seen them on YouTube. I guess we'll say that. They're really popular with like a certain type of YouTube. How fast do they go? Pretty quick, I think. Apparently too quick. U.S. Safety Watchdog warns against the one wheel boards after reported ejection in in injuries. One wheels rejected the demands for a recall. I said, ah, you know, motorcycles and uh, bicycles and stuff like that. People injure themselves all the time. We recommend people wear knee pads and helmets and they don't. So, yeah, he's like they pointed out that the bicycle injury rate was way higher. But I can see how, like, if that thing stops suddenly, you're just, yeah, you're just going to keep going. That's true of a skateboard, though, right? Yeah. yeah. But you're not going nearly as fast on a skateboard compared to this thing. Maybe you're not, Krista. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm definitely not. I've tried to skateboard. I'm not good at it. And we have, uh, you know, China has these weird rules where you can't just do business in their country. You have to have a local subsidiary that does business in their country. And there's all these complicated contracts which expire. Blizzard will pull World of Warcraft from China as the NetEase deal ends. In before, a small crack team produces a clone of World of Warcraft in just a few weeks. Oddly enough... That this contract affects everything except Diablo Mobile. What was the name of it? Diablo Mortal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that game was so bad. But the Chinese. And yet they made a ton of money off yeah, of it. The Chinese love it, and they're pay, spending money on it, so it huh. gets to stay for whatever reason. Interesting. Wasn't this might be me misremembering, but wasn't there an old version of World of Warcraft where like they changed the skeletons into something else because? The Chinese people didn't like skeletons and there was a rule against just like showing them in a video game. <laughs> what did they turn them into? I can't remember. I might be completely manufacturing this, but maybe someone will know. <coughs> Is that, I can't imagine you couldn't have skeletons, but you could have people stabbing each other. I don't know. It's weird. Maybe I dreamt that. That's a cool dream if you did. Yeah. Uh. And Google has a bevy of new features. I didn't find any of them too compelling. Oh. Did you? Mm -mm. Google rolls out new search features across maps, search, and shopping, or just new features in general. The big ones were around restaurants. You can now search for a meal that you want or ingredients that you want to eat, and they'll tell you where to go to get <laughs> that food. The thing that scared me about that, I was thinking as a someone who works in the web industry, I'm like, does that mean there's going to be some sort of like new standard I have to follow if I'm designing yeah. a restaurant website so it'll be compatible with this new search thing? The augmented reality one I thought was the big one. But only available in very major cities. Yeah. You just hold up your phone and it shows you what businesses are inside the, the area. The thing. Or if you did a search for food, it shows you which ones are closer in an augmented reality kind of way instead of a map and walking directions kind of way. And we don't have uh, screenshots of it, but they also have augmented reality where you hold up your phone on your feet and it shows you what shoes would look like on your feet. Oh, yeah. And then, like, yeah, I think there's another one where it's, like, match your skin tone for foundation. Okay. I don't see how you can ever... I would never trust a, a website or anything oh. like that to do that for skin tone. What about your... Uh, cosmetics that someone sent oh you. oh yeah i tried them i actually really liked it it's a moisturizer so you use the moisturizer and then you put a little bit of the gel in it and it like makes your skin really soft that's a strong thing to have in these because we were just talking about how, how dry, dry it is it yeah is. it's been really nice thank you who was that uh andrew will i think is the username they sent me the same box of cosmetics before from the same brand were you had you worked through the other one uh already? i have a little bit of some of the gel cleanser left but Good timing, i, had, I had used a lot of the other what if they knew that you were ready for it because they're monitoring your my your location? Bathroom. That would be incredible, <laughs> considering where I live. That's amazing. And here's a, a Captain Obvious story. We've known about this for a while, but they did uh, do a pretty good roundup. Internet providers play tricks to raise your bill. Here are the worst. AT&T. AT&T yeah. is the worst. Yeah. yeah. Also Spectrum. Also uh, Suddenlink. Suddenlink and AT&T were the worst, though. Was Spectrum even mentioned on this list, or was that just for bundling? Well, bundling. They're, okay. They're owned by who? Oh, they might be lumped together. I'm, I'm surprised this article didn't mention the broadband nutrition thing, though. So this is, they're kind of pointing out, it's like, yeah, if you're poor, you're going to pay more. Yeah. If there's no competition, you're going to pay more. AT&T, the spread oh. is basically $60. It's like, no matter <laughs> what they have, it's going to cost $60. If then. you're poor in a rural area and there's no one else. $60. Yeah. $63, in fact. 
Sonic. I've never heard of Sonic Broadband. Yeah, there were several brands I'd never heard of. Sonic is a subsidiary of Suddenlink, I, I believe. So AT&T, they yeah, they were far and away the worst. Um, no surprise there. They pointed out that obviously the best thing to do is to call and threaten to quit. And I think it was almost 50% of the time you would get massive savings. That's such a waste of everybody's time, though. That's because they know most people won't do it. Won't yeah, do it. I mean, yeah, I don't want to call them. That's why it's effective. Can you imagine when we have the technology for individual goods? You go to Walmart and you have to negotiate with Walmart to buy your goods. They don't just tell you what it costs. I mean, yeah, we're just bringing back the bartering <laughs> system. We're going to let you have these grapes, but next week we might need more money for them. <laughs> well, it's already happening. <laughs> no, not for next week's grapes. For the uh, grapes you're getting now. Oh, we might okay. send you an additional grape bill. And you have to agree to that. Grow your own grapes. Welcome Viva to, la revolution. I mean, that really is broadband. It's, yeah. It's like, oh, your introductory pricing's over. We're going to need more money. <laughs> I didn't get my grapes this week. Oh, we're sorry about that. We're still going to bill you full for your grapes. I remember when fiber first came to town, like the month or the two months before that, my introductory pricing ended and it was going to be like $50 more. And I was like, yeah, I mean, do I really have to cancel to get the better rate? And they're like, yeah, there's there's nobody else. <laughs> and I called back the week later and was like, I want to cancel. And they're like, Wait, really? Well, uh, Fortnite or Epic is not just in combat with Apple. They're also in combat with Google for the same reasons. And they are uncovering in their uh, uh, discovery with these lawsuits some very embarrassing things. However, Google has said, no, this is not true, as has Activision. Fortnite Maker says Google paid Activision millions not to launch a rival app store. Epic Games, which is in the midst of lawsuits against Google and Apple, filed court documents, says that it proves wrongful doing. So Google says, now that payment for millions of dollars was not a really about an app store. We really just wanted to get alignment in terms of their application distribution strategy, which sounds a lot like an app store. Mm. Sounds like they might not be able to prove it, but it's definitely true. <laughs> so. And we did, we covered this earlier because uh, in the government section, we pointed out that the powers that be are looking into this. Enough people are angry. There's so many Taylor Swift fans that the Fury has actually moved our leaders to uh, action, which is like, they don't do that about anything. But this was a big deal. Taylor Swift says that her team was assured repeatedly and in writing the ticket demands would be met for her heiress tour. In fact, the website went down. Do you have the capacity for this? Yeah, absolutely. We're the we're a monopoly. We own and control everything. We could definitely handle this. They, in fact, could not. My favorite paragraph reading about this was they pointed out how there was supposed to be another sale that was exclusive to Capital One customers. Mm. It's like all these disgusting. Oh yeah, because she does uh she does ads for them. Right. So the poor Capital One customers didn't even get their special treatment because of this. I've seen a lot of people salty about this. I actually had a friend who managed to get tickets and I don't want to know how much she paid for them. I think a lot of them started at like 500. I don't, I mean, you know, her music is fine when it comes to pop music, but yeah. I don't understand the, the desperate need to, to go see her to, live. To yeah. Look, look at her. I mean, she's a lovely girl. Can I get some news footage of what it was like in the stadium? That's all I need. Yeah, it'd probably be like a, a, a home viewing experience on yeah. Disney Plus that you can check out. You're virtually there in the stadium. Oh, that sounds much better than actually being there. She uh, she had some sort of documentary come out about her. I think on one of those streaming platforms, it was Prime or Disney Plus or was it? Was she involved? Or yeah, was it, she she uh, was like, I guess the head of it. So it wasn't true then. Probably not. It was probably a PR piece. It's the Weird Al Yankovic story. Oh, did you ever check that one out? I did, yeah. Was it good? What did you think? It was pretty good. I, it was, it, the whole thing was tongue-in-cheek. It was amazing. Yeah, I, wish, I mean, I guess he doesn't want to tell his story. I can respect that. Yeah. I think that he thinks that his story is so boring that this is much better. Because there, there were little grains of truth sprinkled in the movie that were amazing and, and brilliantly woven in with stuff. Isn't it like there's something interesting about the fact that every other story that comes out of the music industry is so interesting because it's a train wreck yeah and he's just <laughs> he's just kind of normal he's a talented musician that managed to keep it together yeah uh, you know what the the most interesting thing about weird al is he's not that weird 
Well, the Ford CEO, uh, he has good things to say about electric vehicles. Not for you. I don't think this is going to affect you at all. Ford CEO, 40% less labor to build electric vehicles. And yet, they're not going to cost less. I guess it would affect you if you work for Ford. Yeah. It'll affect you poorly. Also, Jim Farley, the CEO of Ford, is the cousin of Chris Farley. Did that blow your mind yeah. when you read that? I was like, wait, what? Is it, Talk was, about a well-connected family. Was it Ford or a different company that was making the, the van down by the river? <laughs> was it Ford? It might have been. I think it was, yeah. yeah I wonder if that has anything to do with it. <laughs> I'm They're like Chris Farley. Jim, we've all heard the story. Could you stop with it? And he's like, no, I think there's something here. <laughs> and here's uh here's two words that should bring a chill down <laughs> your spine. Amazon Healthcare. Amazon announces new virtual healthcare service to help with allergies, acne, and hair loss. Things that you don't need drugs for. I'm pretty sure that they are, the CNBC article left this out, but I'm pretty sure it's also for things like Viagra, but I just didn't want to mention that. In the yeah, article. well, like Accutane yeah. and uh, what's the, they got a hair loss drug now too, where it's prescription, but it's like, they'll give it to anybody. Remember like three years ago, there was this for Adderall and that, that got shut down really quickly because it's like, wait, that's a controlled substance. It's like, oh, oops, our bad. Well, that was the one that would just mail it to you. Yeah. Is it? Well, Accutane, the, the one they put on your skin if you have bad acne. No, no you have to take, you it. take it, but it's for that. Yeah. Okay. I thought that had some sort of horrible side effect if you're oh, not yeah. careful. It can, yeah. Yeah. I think if you're like pregnant or if you have anemia or something like that. Yeah, it's, it's not for good you. for you. But they're fine with that. And they've got plausible deniability because you spent 15 minutes on a bad Zoom call with a doctor. Uh -huh. You know, a D list or D student doctor. D's get degrees, am I right? that's who you'll be talking to those guys sold a lot of oxy although having seen a bunch of doctors lately it's really not a lot better you just show up and they're like okay here's what we're gonna do we're gonna run this on your insurance make sure they're gonna do stuff i'm just you know hello how's it going yeah. right, i'll catch you next time and it's, that was the meeting that was i the heard initial meeting there's a phrase in the medical industry that they've coined for that diagnose and dash yeah wow yeah that's exactly what it was except i'm still waiting on my diagnosis well, this was hot news as it just happened. Was this Wednesday or Thursday? We got the, the big unbanning. Elon Musk says he will unban Donald Trump after Twitter poll. And he has at this point. You can go back to Trump's account and see all his old tweets. I, as as of the time I read this, Trump had not tweeted yet. Yeah. No. As, yeah. The, uh, as of the time we're shooting this, he has in fact said he's not coming back. But I think that he will reverse position on that fairly quickly. He is a man who loves a crowd to yeah. talk to. He mm -hmm. likes to express himself. And the I saw somebody juxtaposed. How many votes did that get? It was a lot, but it was almost 50-50, like the, the vote. But the total reach was massive. Like a lot of people looked at it. And then a lot of people also voted versus Trump's post about it on Truth Social, which had... 174 truths, which is their like system. Oh. <laughs> so it's like, you're not really talking to a lot of people over there. Can you really resist? Though I do kind of wonder, I've seen a lot of people complain like, hey, I blocked Elon Musk or I muted him or whatever, and I'm still seeing his posts and his polls. Yeah. And it's like, is he getting that kind of reach because he's just yeah. forcing everybody to look at it? So funny thing about the reinstatement, initially, he, the new account, the new Trump account started with zero followers and then it jumped to like 800,000 in the first 17 minutes and then it trailed off after like 30 or 40 minutes and then like a couple hours later it was back to 83 million that's weird i think the the conspiracy theory online is that musk wanted trump to see the numbers growing like crazy but that didn't happen and so he's like ah, i just restored them trying to tease him back in yeah mm. i mean if you look at the numbers if he's got the internal dashboard and he's looking at what has moved growth on twitter there's got to be a big red flashing Donald Trump, right? Like, <laughs> Just yeah. controversy and yeah. things. That yeah, make things we'll get. Out, yeah, argue about. Yeah, you know, I was talking about this on the stream. I was. Uh, I just read some like nonfiction government conspiracy books about MK Ultra and uh, stuff like that recently, and I was like, I want more political nonfiction like this. So I went to the New York Times bestseller list for nonfiction, not just political nonfiction, all nonfiction. I would conservatively estimate 50% of those books are about Donald Trump. <laughs> it's is there it's not, both sides. It's like pro and anti-Trump, yeah, that's I don't, all it is. I don't understand 
Like, he's not that interesting. You're doing such a good job with your physical health. Why would you do that to your mental health? Yeah. That's <laughs> just, that's like the ultimate, you know, poof. Uh, that's oh, like, that's like me reading uh, world news every day and I'm getting know. freaked out. I loved the MK Ultra book. I mean, it's terrifying, but, but the big thing about it is you're reading it and you're like, they're still doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah. can see this in so many things that they're doing today. <laughs> uh, I, You know what? We, uh, ah, is that later? But like the, the people, the coach at FTX, like the performance coach, I think that guy's CIA. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that guy's CIA. <laughs> Did we? Oh yeah, we didn't do this one yet. Wait, yeah. I was just clicking while I was telling my story. Uh, Meta, yes. Yeah, so this is a quick story. This is kind of like I imagine this probably some of this happened at Twitter too, right? Yeah, that's what happened at every. Yeah. Like big <clears throat> social media site. But now that they're all falling apart, yeah. it's going to get worse. Meta fires several employees and security guards, which are contractors, for hijacking user accounts, according to a report. It turns out that there's an internal system that's like, ah, something weird happened and you just need to reset a password for a family member. All right, go on in. We trust you. <laughs> Fortunately, somebody was paying attention some of the time. They, I don't think they told totals in this. I would love to know what you got paid per hack. I bet it was real low. Which should tell you something about how much they're paying their security teams if Probably. they're willing to like do that for nothing. Do you think the security team is actually Facebook employees or is that subcontracted? Probably subcontracted so they don't have to pay insurance and stuff. Well, Facebook has also decided to make some changes about Mr. Trump. As you remember, they got in quite a bit of trouble for somewhat selectively choosing what to post and what not to post when it came to politicians. Looks like this time they're just throwing their hands up. Facebook fact checkers will stop checking Trump after a presidential bid announcement. I just don't want to hear from him anymore. Everybody stop talking it's, about him. It's just so exhausting. Yeah, it's just. But it gets the clicks. <sighs> it yeah. makes money still. So that's and never going to change. We covered this already. All right. Yeah, he's just, he finally did it. <laughs> Good job. And. Musk, uh, the takeover <laughs> does not seem to be going well. Now, the narrative is squarely against him, so maybe it's not as bad as it seems, but it seems pretty bad. <laughs> Musk emails remaining Twitter staff to find anyone who actually writes software. The, uh, the email said, uh, anyone who actually writes software, please report to the 10th floor. And um, I just... Okay. For some reason, in my, in my mind, this... Uh, Triggered. You remember the meme, uh, safety not guaranteed? That's what, <laughs> so, like, meet me on the 10th floor. I've only done this software thing have, once before. You posted that the other day, and I, I immediately heard the song. Do, 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 do. <laughs> what a great ad. That was not the only thing he asked for, though. He also asked for, like, examples of their best work and screenshots showing their best code. Do you think he could sit down and judge that? There was another post, and it might have been a parody, but it was from someone, I think, who said that they worked at Twitter and they were asked to print their code. Yeah, yeah. well, he wanted screenshots, at least. Can you imagine if a client of ours was like, can you print some code for me? <laughs> Would you not immediately laugh in their face? Like, if the, I mean, if they were a good client, I'd just yeah. give it to them. Like, here you go. Here's, uh, yeah, here's, here's us connecting to a database. Enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some SQL statements under my belt that were like 12 pages long. And it's just like, just the, the query parser takes like two seconds to parse this. Oh, yeah. Oh, and you can see here in the source where um, at the end of every line of SQL, I did a carriage return because it's so much more readable. <laughs> so you enjoy that. Now, this joint here, it's got to be a left joint. Otherwise, you get into all sorts of problems. <laughs> all right. We'll see you Happy Friday. Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. And uh, watch the poofas. Mm. Your Thanksgiving table is going to be a landmine of unsaturated fats. Or be not. careful. <laughs> or it'll mostly be rice and beans and maybe a little squash. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can have uh, tofurkey. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. We'll see you guys. Bye.